The Chanel has landed. What? The Chanel has landed. What? Chanel, the holiday 2022 collection. It's landed. What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Super excited today because I have another Chanel review for you all today. I have the Chanel 2022 holiday collection. I'm very excited to show this to you all. I have a lot of thoughts. I have the eyeshadow palette. I have both illuminizers, and I also have one of the lip products. We're going to be doing daylight swatches. I have two demos to do for you all today, and we're also going to do tons of comparisons so I can help you figure out if you should be picking this up. Is this something that you need? We're about to to get into it right now. And if this happens to be your first time here, then welcome, welcome. My name is Sophia and this is my channel where we talk about all things beauty and luxury. Every single week I upload new content and all the newest luxury beauty releases. So if you love Chanel, Dior, Tom Ford, Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, Sephora brands, luxury brands, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button to join the fam. We have so, so much fun on this channel. And you can also click the notification bell to hear about every time I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video and you find it helpful, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. And as always, I will be linking everything that I mentioned in this video, including all of the comparison products in the description box down below. Depending on the retailer, most of my links are affiliate links. So if you love this video and you want to support my channel, shopping through those links is a really great way to do so at no additional cost to you. Okay, party people, let's get into this review. This might be a little bit of a longer video because I do have several items from this collection to review. My reviews tend to be a little bit on the long and detailed side. They're designed to be both entertaining, but also helpful. I like to get up close and personal and and really try and show you the best, most realistic representation of these products in different lights, showing you different wearable looks, kind of like if you were here with me and we were looking at these products together in person. So let's talk a little bit about this collection. Officially, this collection drops on October 13th. That is what my Chanel sales associate told me. I picked up all of these products in my local boutique here in Boston. A lot of times with these collections, they might not be available online or at other retailers, but sometimes you can get them in the boutique a couple of days early. They said they were allowed to sell them to me, so I picked these items up locally. And I'm trying to get this review up quickly for you all so you can kind of check out and see what you might wanna pick up before the collection launches online. So let's talk about this collection a little bit. This collection is inspired by the moon. I'll actually show you guys the packaging right here. I think it looks pretty cool and you're going to see this manifested in the product embossing as well. I think it's interesting that a lot of luxury brands this season are doing a kind of like celestial, planetary, stars kind of theme. I think Clay de Poe did it, Guerlain has done it, Pat McGrath, NARS, Dior. I know I'm forgetting some, but this seems to be very on trend. I think it's kind of cool that Chanel, they've decided to be inspired by the moon. I think most of these other other brands are picking more like constellations and horoscopes and stars. So I think it's interesting. I don't know. Comment down below. And let me know what you think of this theme for holidays. It's something that you can really get behind. I do think it's a little bit more generic than maybe something seasonal like snowflakes or something like very Christmas oriented. Let me know what you think. The way that this review is going to work is I'm going to go through each of the products that I picked up. I'm going to tell you guys all the details, the price, show you close-ups. We're going to do swatches. I'm going to show you guys looks. Then I'm going to do some comparisons of each of the products and then I'm going to sum up everything in my final thoughts. Let's start off with this eyeshadow palette that I know a lot of you are very curious about. This is number 937 Ombre de Lune. This retails for $65, which I'm pretty sure is standard for Chanel. It has an 18 month shelf life and it is made in Italy which we all love. Let me show you all some close-ups of this palette so you can take a look at that embossing. It's meant to look like the moon. I would love to hear if you guys think that this is cute. Is it beautiful to you or do you think that this looks like a straight-up petri dish? When I first looked at it I instantly thought that looks like the moon. Is this supposed to be like a planetary type of collection? But I can totally see how some people might think it looks a little weird, like maybe something is growing in there. I don't know. I would love to hear your thoughts. I also really wanted to show you some really close-up photos of this because every single promo photo that I saw for this palette looked a little bit different. I thought that this was going to be much more golden and much more neutral toned. That's what a lot of the promo photos look like. But as you guys can see, this is actually quite like neutral to warm toned in my opinion. Going off of what it says on the packaging, these top two shades here are going to be medium shades. Those are perfect for all over the lid. Also in the crease as kind of like a transition shade. They're great for one and dones. You guys will see in the demo how each of these performs. Then this bottom shade right here, this is a light shade. It's kind of like a golden glittery topper. And then this one in the corner is considered a dark shade. That is perfect for kind of building up depth or if you just want a little bit of a deeper look. I'm going to show you guys some swatches now in different types of light. I definitely was a little 
little bit afraid that those top two shades would be kind of too similar to each other. But I must say, I do think that they are different enough. One of them is more of like a soft, silky, almost cashmere-y type of satin. And then the other one is a little bit like pinkier and peachier with just a little bit of sparkle. I do think that they are different enough. And then you're clearly going to see that the golden shade, this is more like a glitter topper, as I mentioned. It's not going to have a super pigmented base. And you'll see how I use this in a second in the demo. I also want to point out in the swatches that these shadows, they're very silky. They have just like a touch of creaminess. Some of the other shadows that I've tried from Chanel can be quite powdery, especially the ones in the Tweed collection, which if you've ever watched my review of that, you know, those weren't my favorite shadows. I think with Chanel shadows, it kind of depends on the palette, whether or not I end up liking it. So stay tuned for my final thoughts. But I do want to say that these shadows, they have a really nice silky feel. And I do feel like they have a decent amount of pigment compared to a lot of other Chanel palettes. I'm going to show you all two different looks that I did with this palette. The first one is going to be a softer look. And then I'm going to show you how I got this look that I'm wearing today, which for me is a little bit more of like an evening, sultry, slightly more glam kind of look in case you guys want to learn how you can take it up a notch. So let's get into the demos. Starting off with the soft look, I first went in with the top right medium shade. This is really good for a transition color. Just kind of pop that in the crease. This is a basic shade, but I find it incredibly flattering on my skin tone. This specific shade reminds me of Tom Ford New Dip. Don't worry, we're going to do some comparisons later in this video with that palette, but that's what I was instantly reminded of when I went in with this tone. It has a really nice satiny look to it. I also think that in addition to it being a great transition shade, this could be a perfect one and done type of shadow. If you're just kind of in a rush or you want something really simple and natural. Next up, I went in with the other medium shade, except I put this one all over the lid. Here's where you're going to notice these shades are different enough. Once again, this shade has just like a little bit more sparkle and it has more of like that beautiful pinky undertone as opposed to the other medium shade. Next up, I went in with a dark shade in the palette using a fluffy brush. Once again, this is supposed to be the soft look. So this is kind of what I would do on an everyday basis. If I was going out, getting ready for work, running errands, anything like that during the day, I would go in with a fluffy brush and just kind of brush that into the crease. I think it blends in with the other shadows quite nicely. I also like that this shade, it doesn't have any sparkles or glitter. So we're not going to have anything weird and sparkly standing out as we blend it into the crease to create some depth. I also went into that first medium shade and I brushed that along the lower lash line just to kind of match what we were doing on the top. And then finally, I went in with the beautiful golden topper shade. And I think the best way to apply this is with the finger. I went in with a weasel hairbrush and tried to precisely place that. And I think that that works. You can definitely use a small flat brush, maybe weasel hair or something synthetic. But I really think going in with your finger is where you're going to get the most pigment. Finally, I put on some Chanel Mask mascara and this is the first look. This is the softer look. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Is this something easy that you guys think that you could recreate? I thought it was very effortless. I thought it was super wearable. I'm really liking the tones in this look and I would love to hear what you guys think. So for the look that I'm wearing today, I basically just wanted to show you all how you can take almost basically what I just did in the soft look and maybe deepen it up a little bit, glam it up a little bit for evening. So essentially what I did is I did the first couple steps exactly the same. Going in with this shade in the crease, going in with this shade all over the lid, putting this shade on the bottom lash line. And then I put this darker shade in the crease, blend it out just a little bit. But then what I did is I wanted to see, can we take this darker shade and build up more depth? How much more depth can we get from that darker shade? So I took more of a densely packed, pointy, pencil-y type of brush from Sonia G. I will link this brush down below. I think it's called the Crease One. And I really dug into the deep shade and tried to build up more depth along the outer V. I want to say I did about three layers of pigment. And you guys will see, like, you definitely can build this up a little bit. But caveat, it's not going to be like the most depth that you get. We all know like these are not Pat McGrath shadows. These are not going to be like crazy pigmented. This is a very soft brown. And for the most part, for those of you who really love Chanel, I think you're going to like this shade. But I just wanted to demonstrate here kind of the difference between 
going in softly with that shade and going in a little bit more extreme with that shade and just how much depth you get. Like you can see right now, I don't think that this is a super smoky look. What I also wanted to show you is what this look looks like when you put on eyeliner. So I put on one of my favorite Chanel eyeliners. I think this is called Plum Intense. I'll link the shade and where I got it down below. And then I put on some mascara. And then this is the darker look. This is at least darker for me. I realize for some people they might want something a little bit smokier, but I really don't think that you're going to get that with this palette. Comment down below. Let me know, was this helpful to kind of see the difference between eyeliner, no eyeliner, you know, a little bit more of the dark shadow, less dark shadow. I'm trying to show you guys how you can create different looks with this palette. And I would love to hear which of these looks did you like the best on me. Side note, before we go to the luminizers, I want to show you guys what this palette looks like after I've done basically all of this swatching application comparisons. This embossing wears off incredibly easy. In fact, I would say pretty much immediately the embossing wore off. Like it's really not there. You can kind of see the little bottle a little bit. You can see the Chanel emblem. That's the one thing that remains. But all of like that moon-like embossing, it pretty much wore away. So I just want to mention that to you because I know a lot of you, sometimes you buy two of these because you just like looking at them. And I, I totally get that if you're a collector. If you don't like the moon embossing, maybe this is good news. Maybe you didn't want that. So I thought it would be a really good thing to mention. Um, The other thing I wanted to mention is that I got this adorable little sample of the new Noir Allure Mascara from Chanel. I think this is a really good mascara. So just putting that out as a side note, if you're somebody that likes long wearing, tubing mascaras with more of a kind of like a, a plasticky spiky one I think you're really gonna like this and this is the mascara that I have on today and in both of the looks I will be doing some comparisons of the eyeshadow palette later in this video but first we gotta talk about the luminizers these are called the Eclat Lunaire oversized illuminating face powder we have two shades I have both of the shades and we're gonna get into some comparisons in just a second but first off can we talk about how big these are I did not know these were going to be maxi size. Like, how much highlighter do I need? They are ginormous. I'll show you guys a quick image of what these look like compared to the Chanel Camellia highlighter. Just for reference, like, these are enormous. This is 16 grams, and the Camellia highlighter comes with 10 grams. So it is a bigger value, but I, I don't know if I need this much. <laughs> I don't know if I need this much highlighter. They are ginormous, but they are like spectacular looking. These retail for a whopping $88, $88. Oh God, they're so expensive. The Camellia highlighter was $80 just for some perspective there. So yeah, it's, it's a better value. These have an 18 month shelf life and these are also made in Italy. As I mentioned, we have two shades. First up, we have the Ore Rose, which is basically like a rose gold. And then we have the darker one, which is the Couvre Dore. I don't think that they look super different in the pan. I think in this lighting, I'm filming in natural light. You can definitely tell that the rose gold one is more rosy gold and this one has more of a copper tone but let me show you all some close-ups so you can appreciate the beautiful moon embossing and kind of get a better idea for the tone of these first up here we have the aura rose as you can see pinkier undertone very similar embossing to what we got on the eyeshadow palette and then here is the darker one the couvre doré which by, by the way guys i'm really sorry if my pronunciation is bad i don't speak french but i i am trying here this one when you take a look at the swatches it is noticeably warmer in fact let me show you guys a comparison of both of these side by side. I think this is going to be helpful in understanding the undertones. They're not that much different in terms of the tone. Like the Couvre Doré is definitely deeper. But I think the difference here is very much so with the undertones. One being pinkier and then the other one being more like a coppery golden undertone. Between the two, the formula is exactly the same. It's also pretty much the same as the Camellia highlighter. I'll show some comparison swatches of that in the next section of this video. These are called Illumina illuminating face powders, but don't let the marketing speak confuse you. These are highlighters, like they're highlighters. You can use them on the face, you can use them on the body. I think most of us are probably gonna be using this on the face, but I actually think, especially because these are kind of like that maxi size, these would be gorgeous if you have like one of those big body like kabuki brushes or something, just sort of brushing it along the decollete, like for a holiday glam type of look, if you're wearing a beautiful dress, maybe for a special event or going out, something like that. I tend to think of illuminating powder as being a marketing term where 
It's definitely glowier than a finishing powder. For example, the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders, but it's a little bit more soft, diffuse, natural, and ethereal than a highlighter. So that's kind of how I like to think of these. These are not very glittery. In fact, I'm gonna show you right now in the demo what these look like on my skin tone. I think my biggest concern for these was that they were just gonna be too dark, especially the copper one. So I'm gonna show you guys how I make these work for my skin tone. What are my thoughts on these for my skin tone and who I think these are gonna be good for. So let's get into the demo. Let's start off with Or Rose. I instantly thought this one was gonna be better for my skin tone because it has that pinkier undertone. This is definitely the lighter of the two and it is intended for probably light to medium or tan skin tones. Even though this is the lighter one of the two, I do wanna emphasize this is still a pretty dark highlight. I find that the best way to apply this is to really buff it in with a really nice buffing brush. My favorite one is the Sonia G Smooth Buffer. It is the best, especially if you're pale like me and you have these kind of either glowy blush blushes or darker highlighters. Going in with that and really buffing it into your blush is perfect. And by the way, the first time when I was filming this, I didn't use any kind of blush. I just had a really light bronzer underneath because I wanted to show you all what this looked like more so on kind of a blank canvas. The formula is beautifully smooth, just like the Camellia highlighter. I think that the rose tone blends in really nicely with my skin tone, even though it is a little bit darker than a lot of other highlighters in my collection. The texture of this is super silky, super smooth. It's very similar to the Camellia highlighter, just a different tone. There's no glitter in it. And I think that the rose gold really buffs into my skin tone quite lightly, even though it is kind of a darker highlighter. And then of course, next up we have Couvre Dore. This one for me, I really have to buff in. This is too dark for me to use as just a general highlight. It's not going to be a natural looking highlight on me, but I do like the way that this looks when I go in with the Sonia G Smooth Buffer and just kind of melt it into the blush. I think for me, this is more of a blush topper. I wasn't so sure about this, but I actually really like it. I think it adds a really nice bronzy kind of glow. What I like about this is that they didn't make this super yellowy gold. It's more of a coppery gold. So if you are someone that has yellow undertone, golden undertone, olive undertone, or if you are deeper skin and you have more of that red undertone, I think this is gonna melt in really nicely with your skin tone, but I could still make it work for me. If you're looking for something that is more natural and you're on the light to fair side, then I don't think I would recommend this for your skin tone. I also wanna show you what these look like when they're layered on top of blood. I'm wearing the Chanel blush Brun Russi today and so I thought you know what let's see what this looks like when I kind of layer it on top of blush almost like a blush topper so I want to show you guys here what it looks like with the rose gold once again I think it blends in super nicely it looks even better with the blush I must say and then also here we have the copper gold as well I think it looks even better with the blush it really brings out that beautiful coppery gold color and I don't think it looks super unnatural I think it just looks like a glowy blush. And that's what's really nice about the illuminating powders from Chanel. If you blend them out, you get a really beautiful sheen. It's not glittery and you really can make the colors work for you in the way that you desire, just depending on the application. And lastly, I wanna talk about one of the lip products that I picked up in this collection. They do have a couple of them. I picked up one of the Rouge Allure Lacs because I actually have not tried out this formula before. And you know what? I really like it. These are great. These retail for $42. They have an 18th month shelf life and they are made in France. And essentially what these are, are liquid lipsticks. I'll show you right here. It comes with a little doe foot applicator. These aren't the kind of liquid lipsticks where you put it on and it dries down to a matte finish. No, on the contrary, these dry down almost to what you would get from like a cream type of lipstick, except you get a little bit more grip to your lips, like your lips and the product, they're like, mm, we like each other, we're sticking together. So you get more longevity. It's super creamy. It's really easy to just kind of spread onto the lips. You get this nice little doe foot applicator, super precise. The color that I got is called Rose Mystere. I'll show you guys a close up of this swatch. Really beautiful, romantic kind of rose color. I thought that this color went really well with the collections. So that's why I picked it up. And also because I wanted to try out the formula. Let me show you all the demo of me applying this to my lips. 
list. As you can see, super duper easy. I've actually been wearing this like all morning on Zoom calls and sometimes if I'm drinking coffee, I'll apply a little bit more. I would say for me, this is kind of like a my lips but better type of shade because my natural lip color is very deep and rosy. So if you want like the Sophia Sees Beauty <laughs> kind of lip look, I know that sounds so dumb. If you want my lip tone, but maybe a little bit deeper, I think that this shade would be really good. This is super easy. The formula of this is really interesting. I wore this all evening yesterday. And like I said, I've been wearing it all morning through breakfast and coffee and calls and all that kind of stuff. And I think the longevity is really, really good with the formula still being very comfortable. There was one other shade of this in the collection, which was kind of a very beautiful red color. I decided to skip on that because I just have so many other reds and I wanted something more wearable if I was going for a new formula. I'll share more about these in my final thoughts, but wanted to give you guys an idea of how these apply, the color, and just kind of an overall review of the formula. Real quick, I wanted to mention to you guys, there's a couple of other products in this collection that I didn't pick up. There are some beautiful eye glosses. There's some stunning nail polishes. And when I was in the boutique, they brought out these shimmer oils. Let me show you all a photo of what these look like. Oh my goodness, I gasped when they brought these out because the bottles are huge and so shimmery and beautiful. And I did try these out on my hands. So I wanted to quickly, like briefly give you my thoughts on these. And I took a couple of clips as well. I'll kind of move over to the side so I can insert those. The first one is a body oil and it smells like Chanel number no. five. It has this beautiful gold glitter. This, because it's an oil, it has a light oily texture. I don't think that it's super oily, but it does have an oily texture. I actually felt that this one didn't have as much pigment as I would have hoped. It could have been maybe we needed to shake up the bottle a little bit more, but I thought it was really nice. I think if you're someone that really likes Chanel number no. five and you just want something to kind of glow up, you know, before an evening out or even at the end of the night, if you just want to have a nice little like bath time and oil up, I think it's nice. They are very expensive, however. So I just wanted to show you guys a close up of what this looked like on my hand. And then the other one, which is more of like a pearlier kind of sheen, this is the Chanel Mademoiselle scent. And unlike the other one, which is an oily texture, this one has a gel texture. So if you want something more lightweight that kind of glides across the skin and sinks in a bit more, this one's going to be better for you. This one was quite glittery. I actually was considering this one, but you'll see from the clip that I have here, this is actually like quite a glittery formula. So I decided to pass, but I wanted to show that to you guys in case you were interested in those. They aren't necessarily for me because I don't know, I just end up using like eucerin and CeraVe stuff on my body at the end of the day. And I also don't show a lot of skin in the winter because I live in a cold climate. But if you have the budget, I think these would be gorgeous to display in your bathroom, on your vanity. And if you like these scents, I think it could be a really nice, you know, luxurious way to kind of end your evening or, you know, put on before you go out. Also, I think they make fantastic gifts because like I said, when she brought them out, I was like, <gasps> They're so shimmery and beautiful. We got to get into some comparisons. This is going to be one of the most important parts of the video where I help you guys understand how these tones compare to other products that you might have in your collection. Or maybe these are products that you've always been wanting and you're trying to decide, do I pick one of these things up and maybe the upcoming Sephora sale or other holiday sales? Or should I get these products on the limited edition holiday collection? So if you want to skip ahead, I always have timestamps down below. But other than that, we're gonna get into some comparisons. The most requested comparison that I got for the eyeshadow palette is with the Chanel Mediterranean Quad. Now, unfortunately, friends, I had some self-control at the beginning of the year and I don't have that palette. But I did take a look at some swatches online and from other reviewers. I'll put an image of this palette up here. I actually think that these palettes are different enough that you could have both. They both have pretty basic color stories, but the Mediterranean looks more like a light gold and then the deeper shade is sort of a, a greeny taupe. Whereas this palette leans much warmer. It's more of a warm, romantic, pinky kind of color story. You have that beautiful topper shade. So I actually think that each of these palettes, they're different enough. The color stories aren't revolutionary, but they're different enough if you're interested in this one. What I do have to compare for you all are some other Chanel palettes, most notably the Tweed ones. The first palette that I'm gonna compare is Chanel Warm Memories. That's the first one that I thought of when I looked at this because 
kind of has like that nice soft warm tone kind of vibe but you know what i actually think that these are quite different chanel warm memories looks so mauve when you put them side by side. I also, I'll be honest, I don't really like Chanel Warm Memories. I know that it is one of their most popular palettes, but it's not very pigmented. And you'll see in the swatches here, to me, the swatches, they look a bit dusty. Like they don't have the beautiful silkiness that you get from the holiday palette. I think that this one, it's more pigmented. It's a little bit warmer and more romantic. And just overall, I like the formula and the color payoff better. Next up, we're getting into the Tweed palettes. I got a lot of requests for these. This is Chanel Tweed 01 Couvre. This is like the golden and brown palette. I think that these also are pretty different. I think that the Tweed 01, it's more like neutral gold, kind of like the Mediterranean palette. If anything, don't get this one if you have the Mediterranean palette. It's also just less silky to the touch. I think that this one out of all the tweeds is the most pigmented, but I just think that the, the texture of this one from the holiday collection, it's silkier and it's also easier to blend. It's also just like a softer, more romantic color story. Next up from the Chanel Tweed collection, we have Tweed 04 Brunette Rose. This is softer and more cool toned. It's a little bit more of, I guess you could say, a classic color story. This is closer to Nude Dip, which we'll do a comparison with in a second. I think that also these are different enough that you could get both. Next up, I have some comparisons with a couple of very popular classic Tom Ford palettes. The first one that was requested was Tom Ford Suspicion. I actually thought that these were going to be more different, but when I did this side by side and I swatched them, they were a little bit more similar than I thought. You really don't get that pinky undertone and that glittery sparkle from the topper shade in the Chanel quad. I think that the Chanel also, it's a softer formula in general up against all all the Tom Ford palettes. Chanel as a brand, their eyeshadows are a little bit softer. So if that's something you prefer, then you might like this palette. But yeah, there is, there's a difference in tones. This one from Chanel, it's more pinky. As promised, we have Tom Ford Nude Dip up next. This looks super cool toned up against the Chanel. I guess Nude Dip, you could say it's kind of neutral to cool tone. I think that these are pretty different palettes. Next up, we have Tom Ford Honeymoon. I think that you all can see straight off the bat, Honeymoon has more of like that purpley character to it. Whereas the one from Chanel, it's softer. It's more of like pinks and browns. And finally from Tom Ford, we have the popular Body Heat palette. I sort of have similar thoughts to this as I did to Honeymoon. I think that from a lot of these Tom Ford palettes, there might be one shade, two shades that are similar, but the overall effect that you get from the palette is different because there might be some other standout shade. In fact, I want to show you guys an image of all of these Tom Ford palettes up against this new one from Chanel, just so you can get an idea of like, if you have two of these Tom Ford palettes, if you have three of them, if you have all four of them like me, because maybe you're a collector or a beauty junkie, you really don't need the one from Chanel. Like you have these tones. I really think that this Chanel holiday palette it does give me Tom Ford vibes. It gives me Tom Ford wet dry vibes, but a little bit softer and with a little bit more sparkle because you have this beautiful golden topper shade. I also received some requests to compare this up against Charlotte Tilbury. So I first want to show you this up against the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Dream Squad. I think it's pretty evident that these are different color stories. The Charlotte Tilbury has more of a pink and purpley nature. The shadows are also way more foiled, way more glittery. It's a much more intense palette. But what I want to show you all, which is one of the closest dupes, probably the best dupe for this palette that I was able to find, is with this other Charlotte Tilbury palette. This is actually, this might be, it's definitely one of my top two, top three quads from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Queen of Glow quad. I think that these are pretty similar. I think the biggest difference here is other than the formula, because the, the Queen of Glow, it's called the Queen of Glow. Like these are super foily and that's why I really like this quad from Charlotte. But also the deepest shade in there, it's more of a burgundy, whereas this one from Chanel is more of a brown. But you know what? Like if you're looking for a more affordable alternative, Charlotte Tilbury has fantastic sales and bundle deals during the holiday. This palette is also always in the Sephora sale. So I'd like to mention this just based off your preferences and your budget. I think this could be a really fantastic alternative if you're going for this type of look. Finally, for the eyeshadow comparisons, I want to show you a comparison with this up against the new Natasha Denona My Dream palette. This is the newest midi palette that she launched. I have a full review of this on my channel. If you're interested in this, I immediately
immediately thought of this palette because in general, we're seeing a lot of brands launch these types of color stories. There's also the new Huda palette. Unfortunately, I don't have that one, but I wanted to show you this comparison. I'll show you some swatches. I don't think that this palette is a dupe, but if you have this palette, you definitely don't need the Chanel. If you like Natasha Denona palettes, if you like palettes that have a bunch of shades and you're fine with that, you very much can get the same exact tones, pretty much the same look. Even the gold topper shade, there's a very similar shade to that in the Natasha Denona My Dream palette. So I want to put that out there. A lot of you guys pick this up and I just, I really do think that this one, it's kind of redundant if you're happy with that one. Only get this one if you're a Chanel lover you want something smaller, maybe you want something a little bit softer, more travel friendly, that's when I would take a look at this one from Chanel. I have a couple comparisons for the luminizers for you guys. The first one, as promised, I do have a comparison with the Chanel Camellia highlighter. Unfortunately, this was limited edition. It came out earlier this year. I reviewed it for you guys and I really like this highlighter. It is so, so stunning. And I want to show you all some swatches here. And I think this will demonstrate just how dark these new ones from the holiday collection are. So first I have the Camellia highlighter, then we have the rose gold luminizer, then we have the copper luminizer. So the Camellia highlighter it's really the best bet if you are pale like me. That is the best undertone. It's pretty light. I like the fact that Chanel is coming out with these options in what is basically the same exact formula for more skin tones. Granted, all of these are limited edition, which is, I don't know, it's a little bit sad. I mean, I think that these are beautiful. I would love to be able to talk about these more in the future, but I think this will be helpful to you all. If you have my skin tone and you already have the Camellia highlighter, I don't think that you really need to pick these up if you're happy with those unless you're going for a more like blush toppery kind of tone and of course if you have a deeper skin tone then I might draw your attention towards these. I thought it would also be nice to compare these luminizers up against a very like standard classic shade of highlighter that I use that I use in a lot of reviews that's good for my skin tone. This is the Dior Forever Couture Luminizer in 04 Golden Glow. I think that this is going to demonstrate once again how much like deeper and peachier and copperier these luminizers from the holiday collection are. I just thought that this was a good like baseline comparison for you all. When I first swatched these luminizers, I knew that I had something in my collection that was like this and I figured it out. This is a comparison with the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Multi Glow in the shade Dream Light. These came out was it earlier this year? I can't even remember. Time goes by so fast. But I also have a review of this entire Pillow Talk collection. I love these highlighters. And I think that this one, Dream Glow, which is the peachier one, it's not an exact dupe, but it's pretty darn close. And I like to use this highlighter in exactly the same way with the Sonia G Smooth Buffer Brush, buffing it all over into my bronzer, into my blush, and it looks mm, so beautiful. I actually like this one more than Romance Light, which is the lighter one of the two. And I thought that maybe this formula would be a little bit more glittery than the Chanel, but it's actually not. I don't think it is. I think it's pretty much like a, a pretty good dupe, if you ask me. Now, while these are not a powder formula, I also think that these give off a similar vibe to the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter wand. So I want to show you guys here a comparison with the Pillow Talk wand and the Pillow Talk 2 wand. So in the swatches here, you got Pillow Talk, Pillow Talk 2, and then you have the two highlighters from the Chanel Holiday Collection. They're not exact dupes, the ones from Charlotte Tilbury, because they're in the Pillow Talk Collection. They are pinkier, but once again, like if you have those and you're happy with that tone, I think you're going to get a really similar effect that you would get from the Chanel ones. I also took a look at the Peach Gasm and the Pink Gasm, but those are different. Those look way more like blushes, and the tones, they're way more pink and peach than these ones from Chanel. Finally, I want to show you another class classic highlighter duo because I think this will be helpful. This is the Tom Ford Reflex Gilt Highlighter Duo. So these are a little bit lighter and you know one of them is a bit pinkier but I wanted to show it to you all because I think that the formula between the Tom Ford and the Chanel is also really similar. The thing about highlighters is that there's a lot of really good highlighters on the market and I think that highlighters or luminizers in this case with Chanel they can be fairly easy to dupe. So I hope that these comparisons are helpful for you all. This is a super big palette and they're very expensive so that's why I do these comparisons. Finally I want to show you all one quick comparison with the lip lack. I'm not going to do a ton of comparisons with this because we could just go on and on when it comes to lip products but I want to show you a comparison up against Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk because 
A lot of people have this shade, and so I feel like it's a really good base color to do a comparison off of. This shade that I have from Chanel, it's deeper, it's a little bit rosier, it's a little more like fall time and romantic. So hopefully this helps give you a good baseline and hopefully it'll help you figure out if this is gonna be a good tone for you. Friends, are you still with me? Are you still with me? Good, because it's time for my final thoughts. I'm gonna let you guys know what I think of each of these products. You probably can tell a little bit from the reviews so far, but I wanna talk about what are the things that I like. And then as always, I'm gonna tell you what are the considerations that you need to have with each of these because there's always some considerations. Most of the makeup that I review is good makeup, but just because it's good doesn't mean that we need to buy it. So let's start off with the eyeshadow palette. What are the things that I really like about this? First off, I really enjoy the balance of tones. When it comes to an eyeshadow quad, the things that I look for in the perfect eyeshadow quad are number one, a really good medium shade that can be good as a transition. Check, we have that, okay? I really like this shade. Number two, something that I can put all over the lid that can also be used as a really good one and done shade when I'm in a hurt. Check, we got this shade. Number three, a deeper shade that I can use to build up depth that is not super sparkly that I can put in the crease. Check, we have that one. And then number four, preferably, because I'm a magpie, I like to glam it up. I want something that adds a little bit more sparkle, whether it's like another lid shade or a top and checkmate we have that too so I like the balance of shades here I also really like the color story I think it's very sultry and romantic and I know that this isn't revolutionary but these are my shades if you're new here I'm a warm tone lover and so I like this beautiful like soft and romantic color story this is the kind of color story that makes me feel my most beautiful if I'm just trying to look pretty and I'm not maybe looking to have a ton of fun and be super artistic with my makeup these do tend to be the shades that I reach for I also very much appreciate and this is probably one of the most important points that these are pigmented enough because if you watch my tweed review I didn't think that a lot of those shades were pigmented enough for me and I know that some people like softer shades and that's totally okay this is just me I like that these are still soft but they're decently pigmented I don't have to dig into the pan I don't have to work hard it's very effortless I like the nice soft like slight touch of creaminess as I mentioned I think that these are Probably like the Tom Ford Wet Dry formula, but a step down in terms of that sheen, which I think for some people, it makes it a little bit more versatile because at the very least, if you want a little bit more shimmer, this shade has a little bit more shimmer to it. And then you've got the topper shade in there as well. I do think that this is gonna work well for a lot of skin tones, especially because this gold shade, it really packs a punch. It looks so much more prominent when I look at myself in the mirror than when I was applying it during the demo. Like at the end of the look, you know, if you like this bright, beautiful, sparkly type of gold, then I think this is gonna be great. And I just think that that shade is really gonna pop on a lot of skin tones. I don't think that you're gonna get super smoky looks from this because as you guys saw in the second demo this shade here the deep one it doesn't build up all that much but I don't really go to Chanel palettes for that type of a look so I'm just calling that out if you have a very deep skin tone I'm a little I'm questioning a little bit whether or not this shade is going to show up and if this shade is going to be enough to build up a lot of depth but I do think that that shade is going to be a really beautiful transition color for those folks with deeper skin tones as someone who likes warm tones I'm actually really happy that this wasn't a super golden palette like kind of what I saw in the promo photos because like we already got that from Dior and from Pat McGrath and a couple of other brands and I wanted something that was a little softer and more sultry and you know what friends this is actually my favorite Chanel palette that I've ever tried and I'm a little bit of a Chanel newbie I haven't been collecting limited edition palettes for that long but I probably have like four or five of their classic palettes and all of the four Chanel tweed palettes and I can't lie to you I love this palette I, I think that this is my favorite so far this is what I wanted from Chanel warm memories but I never got because that palette is just it's not pigmented enough for me. I keep digging into the color and going and trying to put it on my eye and I really don't get the pigment that I want. I think with Chanel, it's like some palettes I like more than others. And I'll be honest, this one is my favorite. It's really, really beautiful. Putting that all aside, what are the considerations that you need to have? I mean, 
the obvious one is like this color story it's not that unique let the comparison section of this video be helpful to you if you already have the natasha denona my dream palette you don't need this if you have charlotte tilbury queen of glow you don't need this if you have all of those tom ford palettes you don't need this those are expensive it's 65 dollars now if you are a chanel collector or maybe you just really like this no judgment at all that's fine that's kind of like who this is for but the color story is not that groundbreaking the other thing is like you know we get these limited edition palettes and we don't get limited edition packaging this looks like pretty much any other chanel palette it is cheaper for them to have a basic component that looks like everything else and then have kind of a limited edition embossing but the embossing is already gone it's already gone like don't buy this because of the embossing i also don't think this is the prettiest embossing that we've seen all year if anything if you like embossings go get the dior holiday palettes that i reviewed for you all because that embossing is mm, so beautiful and it's also a similar theme so my overall thought on this palette is that you really don't need it but i don't think that you're going to be disappointed with it unlike with the tweeds which i really just couldn't recommend too much I, I wouldn't buy those for a friend for example this i would buy for a friend i think this is really beautifully giftable and you know if you don't like big palettes like one of my best friends she loves chanel quads she's not gonna buy a natasha denona midi palette she doesn't need all those shades she doesn't know how to navigate that palette she doesn't care to she's the perfect person to buy this for like she's the perfect customer who loves Chanel, loves something that's a little bit softer, and she's just not going to be bothered with some of these other luxury brands that come out with much bigger palettes. Now let's talk about the highlighters, or excuse me, voluminizers. <laughs> let's talk about the good first. First off, the formula is mm, chef's kiss. It's so beautiful. I love these. I loved the Camellia highlighter. And I told you in that review, it's like, are like are these highlighters worth the price? Definitely not because there's others that are out there on the market, but it is an absolutely stunning formula. I like just how uh, shiny and beautiful and like regal and festive these look in the pan. I also am really excited that we have some darker highlighters that are gonna work for more skin tones. Cause the Camellia highlighter, as gorgeous as it was, I think that my skin tone is the best fit for that. It was very light and pink, but a lot of people like the formula. So I like that we're getting something deeper here for my tan, olive, and sort of medium to deep skin tones. In terms of the considerations, I mean, it's huge. These are huge. They're so big. Look at it up against the size of my head. Like how much powder do we need? I would have much preferred for these to be cheaper and have it be a lower price. I almost would like, even though it's a better value, I don't know. You guys comment down below. How long would this take you to go through? I almost feel like this is going to expire. Even if you use it every day, I think that this would expire before you use it all up. I think it's perfect for using on the body, as I mentioned before, because it is so big, but I just thought that this was so unnecessary. They did this with those bronzers that launched earlier this year, and that made more sense because it's a bronzer, it goes all over your face, and you kind of use those every day, whereas like maybe with a highlighter, you might not be going in with this every day. But yeah, I just think that the overall size is just so unnecessary, and it just makes it so expensive, like almost $90 for a highlighter, jeez. And then the other consideration, which was a good thing for some of you, but a consideration for others out there is that these are pretty dark. They're very dark and on my skin tone, I'll just tell you right now, cause I know I'm gonna get this question. No, these are not natural on me. These are not natural highlighters. If you want something that really blends into your skin tone that is lighter in nature, maybe go look at the Dior Forever Couture Luminizers because they have lighter tones in those. These are going to be deeper. For me, it's a little bit of a richer highlighter, as you can see here, more of, more of a blush topper, as you can see here. So I really think before you spend the $88, ask yourself, are you okay with that kind of golden glow, a glowy blush kind of finish. If you want something more natural, this is not going to be it. Lastly, I alluded to this earlier during the comparisons, but I feel like these are pretty easy to dupe. So if you have something else like this in your collection, I don't really think that you need these. If I was just like a general consumer and I wasn't reviewing, I might be tempted by these, but in the end, I would recommend to myself with my skin tone to not get these because I already have a couple things like this in my collection. Lastly, when it comes to the 
lip lack. If you couldn't tell already, I love this formula. I'm actually really interested in some of the other shades that they have. Do I think that it's worth the price? You know, $42 is a lot of money. I think Chanel kills it with the lip products. They're absolutely beautiful. I like these more than the L'Exe ones that came out earlier this year because they're longer lasting. They're not gonna give you as much shine, but I think for me, this is better because my lip color wears off really quickly. So for me, the $42 was worth it, but don't buy this just because you, you know, you want something from a collection. I wanted to try this formula, so I picked this up and I like the shade, but go on the Chanel website and look at the other shades that they have if you're interested in this, because chances are you might actually find something that's not limited edition that you prefer. And you know what? You can also buy these from like Ulta and other retailers that might have easier returns if you end up not liking it. It's $42. It's expensive. But overall, I really do like this. I think it's a gorgeous shade. I would actually recommend this because I think that the formula is so good. But again, don't feel like you need to buy this just because it's a part of this limited edition collection. So to sum up all of my thoughts, friends, I definitely don't think that you need anything here. I don't think that any of these color stories are groundbreaking, even though the formulas are pretty delightful and I really enjoyed the experience of using them and I like the looks that I got. I think that these colors, they're pretty similar to other things that we've seen from Chanel in the past. Once again, I don't have a huge Chanel collection when it comes to eyeshadows and the luminizers, but I've seen the palettes that have come out and we've seen kind of like these soft tones, neutral tones, reddish to pinky tones. We've seen it before. They launched neutrals for summer, neutrals for fall, and now we're getting neutrals for holiday. And the one opportunity that Chanel had to sort of play around with color, do something a little bit more whimsical, really wow us and kind of have fun with the palettes was the Tweed collection. And I think that they failed miserably at that. The two palettes that I recommended from that collection, if you were gonna pick up any of the four, were the two neutral palettes that I talked about in the comparison section of this video. So I'm kind of like, I don't know, they sort of disappointed me when it came to the tweed palettes. And so I'm not surprised that they went back to neutrals. I think that this sells really well for holiday. We're not in the best economy in the world. And so they want something that's gonna sell well. So I'm sort of like, okay, Chanel, you know, stay in your lane. You do neutrals really well. That is what the Chanel clientele really likes. Of course, you know, every once in a while we like something a little bit more special, but I think that this collection, you really don't need it, but it's still nice and I think it's going to sell very well. If you were to ask me what is my favorite piece in this collection, if I was talking to pre-YouTube reviewer consumer Sophia, what would I recommend to her? I would recommend the eyeshadow palette. That's my favorite piece in this collection. I liked everything that I tried. I really did. I am going to use this collection this fall and holiday season, but my favorite thing is the eyeshadow palette. I like the looks that I got from this. If you are looking for something more interesting after hearing all of this and deciding, you know what? I don't really need this. It's a little boring for me. I have those colors. I would recommend looking at the Guerlain Holiday 2022 palette. That one's a little more special. I did a full review of that palette for you all is a little shimmery, but I know that a lot of you are really gonna like that palette if you're looking for something with just a little bit more color, but is still very wearable. Anyway, friends, enough about what I think. What do you think? Sound off in the comments section down below and let me know what you thought of this collection, the looks that I created, and all of my thoughts. It's totally okay if you disagree with me. I really wanna hear your opinion and we all like different types of makeup. So that's one of my favorite things about making these reviews for you all is just kind of hearing what you all have to think. Are you gonna be picking anything up from this collection? If so, which pieces? Once again, this collection is supposed to be launching on October 13th. So if you guys want all the deets on that and you want to know when things drop, when they go on sale, or when they come back in stock, all that good stuff, then you definitely need to follow me on Instagram. I'll put my handle up here in case you want to go and connect with me over there. That is the best place for all of those hot spicy takes on all the newest collections. And also if you just want to DM me, chat with me, ask me questions, you want some beauty advice, anything like that, definitely go follow me over on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. And if you are watching, you are not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button to join our community. And if you're not sure, head on over to my channel page and check out some of the other videos that I have for Chanel and other luxury brands. And with that, guys, I hope that you're having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye. Twist.
twist and shout. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, baby. Now, come on, baby. Come on and work it on out. Work it on out.